Would you like to try recreating Mappa's amazing style and get that Attack on Titan aesthetic inside of Blender? Well, let's examine that style together and then I'm going to break down a fairly approachable method for getting some really cool renders in the Attack on Titan style. Let's jump right into it. Alright, on the Big Eason Cinema board, we are going to zoom in on the Attack on Titan section. A lot of Mappa's stuff separated onto this right side, so this is primarily Season 4's modern anime style. Now I want you guys to notice that while with Mappa's style there are definitely anime stylizations, like these little lines here and these very harsh cell shaded shadow areas and highlight areas, the overall look is much more grounded and realistic than most anime. Things are not exaggerated nearly as much as we saw in the early seasons of Attack on Titan. We don't have these like great speed lines and streak lines. Everything just feels much more gritty in general. But this will definitely affect our methodology for recreating this inside of Blender compared to other anime styles because Attack on Titan's got a pretty unique thing going for it in my opinion and my recreation is going to be far from perfect but I do hope that I can successfully capture some of these vibes. Now let's look at this creepy creepy image of the rumbling. We're going to take note of the facial directions. So now we can see the main elements and the kind of angles that we want to take inspiration from here and we're going to look into that inside of Blender. You can see here we've got these amazing colossal titan rigs which I'll link you guys in the description so you can grab and use them for yourself and we have more or less taken inspiration from and roughly recreated the composition of this piece. Something very prominent about this character on the left is the teeth and so I wanted this guy to be kind of on the side and the render the teeth and the kind of like snarl would appear like a lot more apparent and exaggerated than otherwise because I wanted to recreate the feel but not necessarily the exact same dimensions and angles because our models are just quite different. The vibes of this one here are a lot more kind of moody, solemn, and he's just kind of staring glassily into the distance with empty eyes. And so I went for a similar thing here. I'll show you the lighting setup in a second, but we've got the same kind of like absolute darkening around the eyes so that there's just emptiness there. But we've similarly just got him staring off to the left of the frame with this looking area and this looking room over here. And you can see we've also kind of grabbed this element over here. I'm not sure if this is meant to be a head, but what I ended up doing is just having the shoulder of another kind of implied colossal titan over here. Again, I think that the grand scale is quite an important thing here, and I think that this works quite well. Now let's break down kind of my method for getting this fiery inferno look inside of Blender. Now this is what the setup looks like, and I know this is probably bad and scuffed looking compared to how you thought it would look. You can see quite clearly now that all of these smoke layers are just 2D planes with a smoke kind of texture on them and it's actually a video so we can play it and get like a progression in the smoke which is pretty cool. Um, we've also obviously got this kind of like very very dense volume box and I'll show you guys very quickly. I've got a very very simple shader here which you guys can copy and essentially what this is doing is creating this kind of varied um, fog effect and it's giving us these volumetric clouds and these clouds are taking on our lighting and we'll look at that next. If you hop over in the shader editor to the world thing, you can just add this sky texture node and these are the settings that I've got if you want to copy them. But basically without the sky texture, if we turn this to zero, we've just got a lot less sense of atmosphere. And if your sun lighting isn't perfect, um, which it, <laughs> it almost never really is, that's when we can come in here with all of these lights. And luckily we've got kind of motivated lighting because we're expected to be all kinds of explosion and fire around and so we have justification for putting extra bright lights here. And these are all area lights with a disc shape. And we'll show you what each of these does. You can see that without this one here, everything's a lot more in shadow and we're kind of just like bringing like extra like fiery light to the side of this guy's face to illuminate it a little bit more. We've got a similar thing going on over here. This one looks a little bit more like a flare, but if I take this one away, we've just kind of got slightly less variation and lighting here. And this guy's face becomes a little bit darker as well. So those are our two front lights. And then similarly, we've got two back lights over here. This one isn't doing way too much, but it's kind of like mimicking this one over here and just adding some yellow tone to the scene. And then lastly, but certainly not least, this one is doing the most. It's got 10,000 watts of power, and this is basically just a massive global area light, and it's just giving the entire scene this fiery orange haze effect. The way that you get these smoke assets inside of Blender is fairly simple. If you have the images as plain add-on enabled inside of Blender, we can just go ahead and import any video into Blender and it's automatically going to set up this thing. And all that you need to do is make sure the auto refresh is turned on, that we have our start frame at frame 1, and we have a correct number of frames. And then all that I'm doing here is feeding this through a color ramp into the emission and alpha so that I can control how much of the smoke is visible and what color it's going to be so that it can fit better into the scene because obviously it's just a video and it's not going to be interacting with stuff like a proper 3D asset. So we need to make some manual adjustments to make it look more fitting. 
A great tip here is that I've added a lot of extra grit to these textures. So initially our texture comes in looking like this. It looks a little bit papery and definitely a lot more on the lines of a kind of hand drawn anime style and it's not really in keeping with this gritty and sort of grounded realistic feel that we've got going on here. So what I've done here is I have fed this texture into a color ramp and then I've crunched the roughness so that we're actually getting like a slightly more accurate roughness map and if we're not getting these kind of weird um, sheen areas over here. And then the main important thing is we're also going to take our image, feed it into a normal map, which is going through a bump map. And what this is going to do when you plug it into the normal is it's going to add all of this little micro detail that we wouldn't otherwise have, and it's going to make the light just interact much more interestingly with the object. Obviously zoomed in there it looks a little bit low resolution, but when we're zoomed out like this, it's just a welcome addition overall. And it's kind of my budget attempt to mimic all of these detailed lines going on here and all of the little anime thatching and sketching bits which add all of the extra detail and visual tone. The final aspect of this is just a simple particle system. I can make a tutorial on these if you want to but it is really just a bunch of floating particles. The last piece to the puzzle is certainly just post-processing. This was my first attempt. This is a slightly more refined attempt. This is the next one. These are some slight improvements. And now we've got our first post-processing pass inside of GIMP. And this post-processing pass is basically just making sure our white balance is correct, adding some like lens flare, some subtle bloom. We've also gone ahead and added some scratches, surface imperfections along the side, and some camera grit and camera grain. And then our Photoshop pass is where a lot of the magic happens. You can see the massive, massive jump in sharpness and detail going between these two. And it definitely is crunched over the top to an extent, especially in this second pass here where I kind of remove this yellow haze and um, go away from the reference to create something a little bit more fiery. And so by taking some 3D art to these extremes, we start to get a bit of that amazing feel that 2D animation can give us. The second one especially feels a little bit less like Mapper style and, and a bit more like something from a weird manga front cover. Now, if you do have Photoshop and want to quickly see Alright, firstly we just want to quickly convert this to a smart object by right clicking on the layer and then it's basically just the camera raw filter provided we've already done our post processing in GIMP. I mess around with these a little bit, I buff the exposure slightly and I do mess around with the temperature a little bit as well and these are the main things here. Our texture, we can bump this like all the way up or like close to it just depending on exactly how much we want. You can see this is just going to bring out fine lines and details and again we're going to get some we're in between anime hand drawn detail and this kind of 3D blend that MAP is going for. Clarity is also going to make everything a lot more contrasty, pretty intense. You can play with this at your own discretion. Dehaze is going to remove the haze. You don't want to go too overboard with this otherwise things are going to look pretty cooked. You can see the scene is very simple. It's just put together over a couple of days so I didn't go for a massive project but I will endeavor to make something larger in scale shortly. I'm currently just trying to study for exams at the same time as keeping up with creating some cool art pieces and so this is what I've got and I hope that this video was useful for you. hope that you've learned something new and I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know if you have any suggestions. It's been using.